A paint trip splatters and runs, revealing a series of images. A woman playing violin, then in a bright pink costume, then in a blind skier pinning atop a mountain. The drip finally lands, revealing text in print and braille. Unsightly opinions. Hi, welcome to Unsightly Opinions. My name is Tamara. Today we are going to be looking at the Envision Smart Glasses for the Blind and Low Vision. Let's start by doing a little bit of an unboxing and talking about its features. Then we're going to try out some of its functions and see what we think about Envision. This video is not sponsored by Envision in any way, shape, or form, but I managed to get my hands on a demo unit, so let's look inside and see what we've got. Opening up the cardboard box, we have this lovely little glasses case that says Envision in raised font on the top. It also has a carrying handle or a strap that you can loop your hand through. Opening up the zipper, we see our Envision glasses. The top of the case has a zipper pocket where you can store the USB to USB-C charging cable that comes with the unit. The Envision glasses use an Enterprise 2 Google Glass model with their own Envision proprietary software. It has a very thin wire band with two nose bridge pieces, and then the camera sits on the right-hand side with a small screen, not useful for most visually impaired folks, and then the power button at the back on the inside. It also comes with this package of test documents. It's got a variety of different things that you can use your glasses to read and test out. And we're going to be playing with that a little bit in just a moment. You must use the Google Glass frame with the Envision glasses, or they can be fitted to a pair of black thick glasses that cost an additional $550. Envision comes with an additional phone app that you can use to identify a variety of things, very much like Microsoft Seeing AI. It follows a subscription-based model of $20 per year or $99 for a lifetime, and I believe if you purchase the Envision glasses, the subscription is included. It has a battery that lasts for five to six hours of normal use, comes with an eight megapixel camera, charges with a USB-C type charger, fast charges to 50% within 30 minutes, weigh around 50 grams, and I'm not sure if that includes the wire frame, and at the time of filming costs $4,500. However, there are frequently discounts available, so watch for those. Its features include color detection, currency detection, scene description, face recognition software, instant text, scanning or batch text, some voice commands, object locating, scene description, calling via IRA, or calling through an ally who might be a contact on your phone, and has multiple language options. It can also read handwriting and has a light detector. Let's test out some of Envision's features. Don't worry about this little extra thing on my ear and this cable running down. It's not part of Envision. It's just a lavalier mic so you can hear what I'm hearing. You can connect Envision to wireless headphones or to Bluetooth speakers, but this is probably the best way for showing it in a video. The first thing I notice when I put on these glasses, and it has nothing to do with the lavalier on my ear, is they don't fit my face very well. They're kind of a little bit floppy and I can't adjust them very well and there is significant weight on the right side where the camera, the speaker, and the screen is sitting. Let's get it turned on. To do that, there's a little button on the back, just inside, past the back of your ear, and you press and hold that for a few seconds to turn it on. I've played with this a little bit before. I have no idea when it's turning on or if I've pressed it long enough because it has a startup sequence, but it doesn't make any noises or chimes until it's fully on. It does take about a minute. Oh. From your home menu, you can do a one finger swipe forwards or backwards to move through the different menus to select different features that it offers. Read, call, identify, find, device settings, feature preferences, teach faces, add ally, instant text, Explore. Describe scene. Many of the features on this device require Wi-Fi. There are only a few that you can do when you're offline, and those would be instant text, detect colors, find objects, find people, and explore. And those are gonna be people that you have taught to the device. There is also a app for your phone, which will do many of the same features, as well as help you pair your glasses with allies and change some of the settings. Let's start with instant text and see what it can do. H. H. It sees an H, I'm not sure. There should be no text. So 
I'm not sure what it's seeing. These are test documents to try and show some of the features of the Envision glasses. So let's use instant text to try and identify what some of these are. We double tap to select. C, hints. E, Antfain. Ace away, hints. So, Tantfain. Sowasees, Cag Kiltata, Antfin, H H E C S. This is a birthday card that you could oh. get with a handwritten note. Use this to demonstrate the handwriting recognition capability of I hey scan text feature are the bottom half own and vision is this okay so this has a handwritten note maybe we'll start with something else instant text I'm gonna just start instant text again we swipe down to move backwards through the menu with one finger so we're gonna double tap again James Monterey 35 runner road 89,001 Nevada subject offer for the position of sales manager Dear James, we were all very excited to meet and get to know you over the past few days. We have been impressed with your background in any time. We can double tap to stop reading. It seems to do pretty well on that. Let's grab some other text item here and see how it does with something that it hasn't been trained on. So I have a book. I'm just going to flip to a random page. Instant text. Let's start instant text again. Instant text. If you hear longer pauses in this video, it usually means that I was trying to reorient the document, moving it up, down, towards, or away from the camera's field of view to get it to read. DM not leaving he matter here. Alloy you. He wung route in. TVE Y post send of the case. He owned in. Re he hard. You don't know your. Is this upside down? Acro Mr. Cranforda. To tell. Ty. Ying. Hey. Me back into the body. Finally it gets. R W T them MLK clots you're looking at. Her hut up. You great gumph. Year two. Okay, this is not making any kind of sense. E. Tef definitely sliced the big organ from top to bed. Immediately that my search was over the Oscly DT. We're almost completely occluded by a cauliflower icons Ben G. Ink from the valves, Baruco's endocarditis. Skaldom seen in cattle. And in. The text is right way up, and it's reading some of the words, but not all of the words. I might have it positioned poorly, so I'm going to try and move it backwards, maybe? Instant text. I'm gonna start really far back. Jeff definitely sis the big orn FRM top to BR. Immediately that my search was Oda. Where Almond Cone Piety added by a CA. Ink from the valves. Barup Sendokant. Seldom seen in cattle. That's still half gibberish, unfortunately. Let's try something else. I have another book here. Instant text. Why bye? Ta. As Tate. And. This is a, I believe, an immunology textbook. Why? Hey. Nothing. E. At peen. Tote the PYKT the end. A CD law like CH 2080 and 872 NA and PDL which Tioni. Tarrant BT actually related ligide on many, i.e. L wipes both CD law and PDI or India. Okay, that's complete gibberish. Okay, we're gonna try this. This is again one of its demo documents. Hello? Did you die? Hello? Envision? Oh. Okay, we're back up and running. Let's try instant text again with one of the test documents. Instant text. Envision glasses. Features. The Envision glasses are a wearable assistive device that allows users to independently access the world around them in a way that is convenient, hands-free, and discreet. Envision glasses make everyday life more accessible for those with visual impairments by using Envision's award-winning AL technology to turn visual information into speech. Very clearly, it seems to be doing very well with this. So now we're going to the read menu to see if we... Instant text. Scan text. Scan the document if it does any better. So now we're in scan text and it's going to give me a lot of beeps when it sees the text. A faster frequency of beeps means that more words are detected. Double tap to scan the text. Okay, and it makes a camera sound to let you know it's taking the photo. And this is the processing sound you're hearing now. I am not going to make you sit through the entire processing time. This took over 20 seconds to process a simple book page. Reader, I found myself a bit short. 
There was really but Mr. Farnan, in the two months I have been here, we must have been over this a dozen times. What is the good of my trying lop an accurate record of the money in the practice if you keep? Is this 17. Oh, just... Harbottle was sitting, head bowed, over the oop, bereaved. It was a new, shiny, black petty cash printed on top in white letters with the incomings and outgoings recorded here was no money. Her knee shoulder sagged. She listlessly took up end finger and thumb in a lonely sixpence TS pages and tinkled into the box. He's been erred. Ho sounded in the passage. So it seems to do a lot better when you scan the text rather than instant text. It was not perfect, but it was significantly improved from the last time. Let's actually get into some of the other features it has. So under find object, we have lots of different options. Bicycle, bottle, car, cat, chair, dog, keyboard, laptop, motorbike, sofa, table, toilet, traffic light, train. So we can identify a chair and it's going to ding every time it sees a chair. If you hear a beep, it means the object is in front of you. No chairs over here. If I turn all the way around, there should be some chairs. It found it. We're gonna see if it can find patience. Car, cat, chair, dog. Okay, patience. If you hear a beep, <gasps> it's a patience. It's a patience, hello. Yes, ding, 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 it sees patience. Find object, find people. I'm gonna double tap on find people. We're gonna check that out. So we're gonna see if it sees Robbie. He's sitting next to me here. If you hear a beep, it means the person is in front of you. Uh, turning, I think I'm facing Robbie. Does it not identify, you're not a person, Robbie. Oh. It just clocked him. Oh, it just identified you. If you hear a beep, it means the person is in front of you. Take a step closer. Yep, it sees you. I wonder why it doesn't see you when you're... I don't know. It's like I have to be looking right at it. Okay, so it doesn't do profiles very well. Explore. So if we go into explore, it's going to try and identify objects it recognizes. Table. Oven. I think this one's very much still in beta. Describe scene. Let's do a describe scene. I'll be facing into my kitchen. Just took a picture. We'll see what it says. A kitchen with a stove and a microwave. Kitchen with a stove and a microwave. There's no microwave over there, but there is a stove. So that's pretty good. Let's do detect light. Since now there's no pitch, I'm covering the camera with my hand. So there's no light. As I slowly move my hand away, it'll get more light. And this is the highest tone it seems to get, so it means there's lots of light, I guess. I personally would like if it didn't kind of max out at what it saw as something as peak brightness, because there's definitely, where I'm sitting, there's different levels of lighting, and it's not just all bright as I pan around. There's a window, there's studio lighting in here, there's dark patches, and it doesn't seem to identify those. It only seems to get to a certain point, and then it says, nope, that's the maximum light. So I would like if it had a little more pitch variety and could pinpoint in on light sources a little better. Obviously I have light perception, but it would still Detect be helpful. Light. Detect recognize cash. So let's do recognize cash. I have Canadian money here. It should identify it. Recognize cash. Re Searching for Canadian dollar. 20 Canadian dollars. And Canadian that would dollars. be correct. If I wanted to change to a different currency, I do have some other money here. I'm not actually sure, what is this? Bank of England. So that would British. be a pound. If I wanted to do pounds, I'd have to do a two finger single tap. Canadian dollar, selected. Euro, download, US dollar, Japanese yen, British pound, Double downloading. Pound. So you would have to know the currency that you're working with before it will identify what it is and you'd have to switch to that currency. I would love if it could just identify the currency type without having to select what kind it is. To download a currency, it took over two minutes. We're going to try and identify this pound. Searching for British pound. I'm bringing it close to the camera. Maybe I'll flip it. 
make sure that you are trying to recognize British pound bills, that the bill is unfolded and are holding it in front of the camera. I am. Don't yell at me. I'm trying different orientations. Ten British pounds. Ten? That's not cool. Color detection. So I have a variety of objects here. Let's start with some bright colors. Chocolate. Chocolate. Yellow. Olive. Olive. It's yellow. Okay, let's try a different one. Gray. Gray. Teal. Green. Dark green. Dark green? Yeah. Black. Green. Violet. Violet. It's neon pink. Light coral. Olive. Okay, let's try some clothing items. Black. It's gray. Gray. Oh, just said gray. Pink. Red. Brown. Brown. Goodness. Okay, how about this one? Gray. Gray? Gray. It's a baby boy. So the final thing we're going to do right now is I'm going to call Robbie as my ally. I already got him set up. It was a little bit of a process, right Robbie? Yep, it was. So what was the process on your end to get it set up? Accepting a link, following the link and just a lot of back and forth on the app trial and error it seemed like it didn't want to accept what i was putting into it but then on about the third or fourth try it finally worked okay well hopefully it's not that much of a process for other people i would hope it would be easy to do calling call. from call call an ally so we're gonna call robbie as my ally okay so he should be seeing what i am seeing when i call him robbie Connecting with Robbie. So he can hear what I'm hearing, and we're getting a little bit of feedback because he's right close to me. What can you see? Yeah, you're seeing. So make me point at the sink. There. Perfect. Can you tell me which one of these items? is the canned fruit. Yeah, it's better canned right there. And what kind of canned fruit is it? Uh, bring it lower. Turn it. Turn it. Two pairs. Perfect. One finger swipe down again to a call ended. And so you swipe down once to make the selection and again to confirm it to end the call. That feature is probably one of the most useful features on this device and the one that I am most excited about, I suppose, because it's a little easier than holding up your phone and panning it around. It leaves your hands free to actually do things and it can be really helpful to just call a human and get that advice and then be able to do what you wanted independently. We'll pop into the other room and I'll give you my thoughts and the final conclusion. My thoughts on Envision. I find the price tag a little bit hard to swallow given its capabilities. I like a lot of things about it. The light detector is a nice feature. Being able to make calls from your smart glasses is invaluable, especially when you are trying to orient or find something in a specific location. I like that it reads handwriting because oftentimes people will leave a handwritten scrawled note and most optical character readers will not recognize that. When scanning, it did generally a good job at reading. I like the battery life because it will last you for almost an entire day. I loved the object it Detection. It had a wide variety of objects you could find. However, it does have some downsides. I found it to be cumbersome to use. I didn't find it to be very intuitive. I had to go pouring through the manual and I'm a very techno-literate person. So there is a larger learning curve with this device. Multiple layers of menus slows you down when you're trying to access things. You can create shortcuts on the app to find your favorite things that you're going to use frequently. However, you can't put everything in your favorites menu because it's just going to take a long time to swipe through the menus to get to where you need. I am a little bit hesitant because the currency detector wasn't 100% accurate. You should be careful with currency detectors and you should be careful with color detectors because in my experience, both make mistakes. So tread with caution. I found the processing time on text to be a lot longer than what I would like and 
I did find it frustrating because I found it very finicky to get things placed in the camera exactly the way it should be. Even though I went through and I did the training paper that came with the document to know where I was supposed to place things, I still wasn't getting it 100% right and it wasn't giving me any information so that I could know when it saw the borders of the document and know if I had gotten it right. The instant text was abysmal. It was not very accurate at reading dense text like books or textbooks. It did do okay with product identification. However, that's your way of accessing text when you're offline. I do also want to mention that repeatedly during use, the Envision glasses would freeze, crash, or restart. It happened more than half a dozen times within an hour, which is a little excessive. I don't know if it's just this pair of Envision glasses or if it's all of them, but that was a little frustrating. When the Envision is starting up, I did find it really challenging to know if the glasses were turning on or not because it doesn't make a sound for the full minute while it's doing its boot sequence. If they can modify that so it makes a tone when you turn it on immediately, that would be really, really helpful. Do I think Envision is worth it? It depends on what you are trying to do. If you want a basic object identifier, I think it's really valuable. If you want something to read instantaneously, it's not going to be a good solution. There are better options on the market. I don't know that this is suited for a lot of people. It wouldn't work with children. It didn't fit my face very comfortably. I did find it heavy to wear the frames. You may want to consider whether something like a free app like Microsoft Seeing AI is going to better suit your needs. I know that most people who live in the blind community are not affluent. It is the sad reality that most of us struggle financially. So if you're going to have a device like this, it better be life-changing. And in my experience, based on what I was able to see today, it wasn't. I am Glad that this technology exists. I do think that some people could take advantage of it. It is not a perfect solution. I think that this technology is in its infancy, so I'm excited to see where it goes next. I'm hoping that if you have had experience with Envision, you'll share it down below because the more we can talk about each device, the more we can talk about our experiences, the better it's going to be for people to make an educated decision about whether this device is right for them. If you've made it this far, thank you so much for watching. Please consider liking, subscribing, hitting that notification bell, engaging down below or on any of my other social media accounts. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.